Ladies and gentlemen, what is happening? I am back with the most moist team of all time, ready to make some stuff happen. Today's match turned out to be a really good one, plus this is just a really cool team to see in action. As always, if you are new here, consider hitting that subscribe button. It'll take you less than a second and you will not regret it, I promise. So let's go ahead and get into the match. Alright, so my opponent is dripped out and gonna lead off with a cleft key. Damn, Pokemon really running out of ideas. They just made a set of keys, a Pokemon, can't believe it. Uh, anyway, this Pokemon's really annoying. It's floating high as shit so you can barely see him up there. And this thing is gonna be Prankster with like all sorts of hazards and Thunder Wave and just overall an annoying time. So, of course, I'll lead off with Politoed, chilling with my one hair on the top of my head, balling out of control. And I decided to just go for the Weather Ball. Of course, getting the rain up is important. Plus, Weather Ball in the rain is going to be the best option for this thing. It's even better than, like, Surf and stuff, which not a lot of people are taking advantage of. But, I know it does over half to the Clef Key, and that's actually pretty solid. As I'm just going to stay in and go for it again. If they somehow decided to opt for another layer of spikes, it's totally fine. But, they decide to switch into Slime Shady. Looking gooey as hell over here, and one of the greatest shinies ever. As uh, I throw some balls at this thing's chest, and it actually, you know, obviously doesn't even do much with a critical hit because this boy is specially defensive as titties and I decide to just go for an ice beam. I'm thinking if I'm this Gudra, I probably just click Dragon Tail here. Um, it just makes sense as it can't really do too much to me. It does end up going for the Dragon Tail, so I'm glad that I did not switch out as I mean, there's just one layer of toxic spikes up, but I can kind of see the gimmick in the team in you know, setting up the hazards with the Klefki, Dragon Tail in and just kind of stirring the pot around. So that is going to draw out Spiky Ballin. We are sharp as hell out here, get hurt by some spikes when it's weird because like I'm the spike but uh, of course Gudra does not really want to deal with a physical attacker and they're gonna end up switching into Colossal you're thinking hey kind of a weird guy to come in it's raining and I have access to like liquidation and stuff but I go for that poison jab and of course it doesn't really hurt him that much but I do end up getting the poison which is solid so I mean this is just a defensive wall Pokemon that I do kind of need to break at this point and at the moment the matchup seems kind of too good to be true of course a liquidation absolutely sends this bitch to the shadow realm and I'm figuring it's likely going to see the Terra here. I do go for the Liquidation regardless, just because uh, it's kind of just too safe of a play not to. Uh, but I do force them into going for that Terra, and it is going to be Terra Water. So, just waters down the, the fiery coals on his back, turns it into a water fountain, and of course, now with this thing's defense, it's going to be taking the Liquidation easy as hell. So, I'm honestly kind of fine with this trade-off. It means that I don't have to worry about them going for the Terra later, but I do actually end up touching this thing and of course get to activate the Flame Body. So... That is actually wildly unfortunate for my dude Overquill over here. Ordinarily, I could potentially start setting up Swords Dances on this thing. Um, I don't really know what type of coverage this thing wants to do against me, but, you know, being burnt is going to really hinder what the, uh, what the Overquill is going to be able to do. So, I basically, I'm going to decide to stay in here, and I do just kind of want to break this thing down at this point. I, I don't have a lot of options for this other than really, like, my Shiftry on my team. So, I go for a Poison Jab there, and I just wanted to see what it decides to go for, as it's going to be the Body Press there, which actually means I can take a couple of these, which is interesting, as Crunch was actually probably my more optimal play to try to fish for a defense drop. I just kind of figured this thing was going to Earthquake or something and knock me out. I just basically... Just kind of left balling for dead out here, and I go for the crunch this time, which does get the defense drop, which, you know, doesn't make a difference because uh, it's at, like, literally 3 HP. So, after the poison, this thing will go down next turn, and uh, sadly, Overquill is kind of going to be limited on what it's able to do here. But I do still have Politoed. I can get back up the rain, and I have some more kind of uh, hyper offense on this team. So, Overquill is not the biggest deal going down here, but what I am happy about is that I was able to basically force the Terra, and I can actually finish off this matchup and see what they decide to bring in, uh, and then just kind of let Overquill go down and then grab a matchup, and it's fine over here. So the rain does stop. It's a beautiful sunny day once again, and I do actually live the burn damage. So the good news about that, like I mentioned, is I get to see what they want to go into, and it turns out they're actually just going to straight up raw dog the Zorak. It just comes in just as himself. You know what? I like that, Zorak. Just be yourself, bro, for real. Um, <laughs> it goes for a U-turn, does knock me out, and that's actually, I'm fine with that, because knocking me out with a new U-turn, they have to go into something else, and then I can switch into what I want accordingly. So, kind of an interesting few turns there, as back comes the boo-boo keys. This thing comes in looking menacing, and honestly, I have a few options of what I want to go into. I decide it's time to bring out Pinocchio. We have never lied. My nose stays the same size, and this thing is actually amazing now. Shiftry is so fun to use with its new Wind Rider ability, so I figured this is honestly a pretty good opportunity to try to set this thing up, because I've already got enough chip onto this thing to where I can knock it out, and it can't use a Prankster Thunder Wave on me because I'm Dark-type, so I'm going to end up going for that Tailwind here. It's going to not only make me about fast as hell, 
flying around like a kite, but it also does activate, of course, my Wind Rider ability. And Shiftry is just fully taking advantage of his new of his new strat here. So with Wind Rider, I now basically double my speed and get a nice little attack boost. And they switched into the Vicavolt Vault here. So I'm thinking I just go right for a knockoff, and honestly, that just straight up kills with that attack boost. Shiftry is such a menace that not even the Vicavolt Vault is safe. So I knock off that thing's boots, I say your fashion statement is gone, and uh, I'm actually pretty well positioned here for the next few turns. I'm going to be a fast Shiftry, and they do not have a lot of defensive options against this thing. So, they go into Espeon here, and the only reason why you switch into Espeon on a Shiftry here in Tailwind, knowing that you're slower, is probably your Focus Sash. So I go for that knockoff here, it does knock him down to the Focus Sash, as uh, now I'm honestly thinking I'm probably going to take something like a Dazzling Gleam and go down. Um, but it's actually gonna go for the Thunder Wave here. And that likely means that this Espeon's kind of a weird variant in that it might not have the coverage here, but being paralyzed under the Tailwind is kind of just a weird speed time, but I just go for another knockoff here to see what happens as they Terra Blast. And without the Terra, they probably think it's still gonna grab the kill, but Pinocchio says, no way, good sir. I do break through the Para and knock off one more time. and does finish off the Espeon. So actually inter interested to see what type of Espeon that was going to be, but uh, being able to live that Terra Blast, Finish that thing off. We're going on a little little mini shifty rampage here as the tailwind does go away and I'm paralyzed. So, you know, it's it's not looking good. But I was able to break the Vicavolt, who was a pretty big threat to the team uh, and the Uspion as well. So they're down to three Pokemon left and they finish me off with a U-turn here uh, from the Clef Key. So on the open switch, I decide it is looking far too dry for my liking out here. And I'm going to go back into the Politoed essentially. I do still have the Polyrath in the back who can get that breaststroke action going and be able to outspeed everything so that is kind of what I'm leaning on as my win condition at this point so uh, there's a whole bunch of key shenanigans going on here it turns out you know Klefki initially was the Zorark this time it's the real Klefki because you can tell by the damage it's taken but I'll tell you what these keys ain't unlocking shit other than this L so bubblegum comes out does make it rain and uh, at this point I just go for the weather ball it of course does knock that thing out but back comes the Gudra who's been out here able to take special hits all damn day but considering I'm likely thinking this thing is probably Assault Vest, the way it's been taking attacks and does not have the recovery, um, I can kind of just stay in here, go for the Weather Ball, and then kind of just whittle it down with two more Ice Beams. As I essentially just need a few more turns left of this Swift Swim, preferably three, for the Polyrath to kind of finish off the team. So I go for an Ice Beam here. It does take that and goes for the Dragon Tail. And I'm really hoping, I'm like, just bring in the Polyrath, please. Polyrath is ready to swim and ready to just get some shit going. However, it does bring in... Uh, the Pheasant Dippity, which is annoying, because while I do have a matchup against this thing, they could potentially go back into the Klefki, who might be able to take two Moonblasts. It's it's still undecided at this point, but uh, I come in looking like a turkey on Thanksgiving. However, I'm going to be the one eat now here, and I'm going to go for that Moonblast, just hoping they just decide to sack off the Gudra, but they switch back into the damn keys. Uh, and at this point, I really wish I was able to get in the Gastrodon to be able to set up some hazards, because the, the free switches are just going unpunished at this point. And a Moonblast on the Klefki, not quite going to be enough to knock that thing out. So, I figure here, if I'm this Klefki, I'm going to go for a Prankster Thunder Wave. So what I decide to do is go for a U-turn. That's going to essentially allow me to get a free switch into Polyrath and try to finish the game. So they do go for that Thunder Wave. All I need now is not a full para. And of course, I do get fully parried. So... I mean, that's annoying. My wings are flapping slowly now because I am paralyzed, but at full health, I'm feeling like I can honestly take damage on this Fezendipity, um, considering their threats are kind of whittled down at this point, but they're just going to go for another layer of spikes here. The, the, the Legos on my side are real, and I'm starting to... The damage on the switch in uh, is getting real annoying, but I do get the U-turn off this point, no full para, and it is finally time to bring in the absolute Goat Frog. Polyrath is one of my favorite Gen 1 Pokemon, and it's super fun to use on a rain team. So finally, Phelps is ready to come in and do some swimming, baby. Um, the one issue against this matchup is that it can Prankster Thunder Wave me, but uh, I do still have exactly three turns of rain left, and even paralyzed, I should still be quick enough to uh, kind of finish off some stuff. So I go for the liquidation here. It will kill the Klefki. Of course, they do Thunder Wave and don't miss because Klefki's eyesight is immaculate. And now I'm a paralyzed Swift Swimmer in the rain. And it's, again, another interesting little speed situation. But I do break through. I finish that thing off with the Liquidation. And now they're, they're down to two Pokemon left. There is the Zorark. And there is going to be that Gudra, who has taken uh, a considerable amount of chip. So, 
they're gonna bring in the Gudra here, and uh, it's actually interesting. Slow ass Gudra with them thick thighs is looking super slimy over there, not able to actually outspeed me. I'm gonna go for this Ice Punch. I do outspeed with that Swift Swim, takes care of the Gudra, and uh, Polyrath is finally able to do what, I, what I've been waiting for this thing to do. Uh, as I take a little bit of Life Orb recoil, but the last Pokemon is going to be the Zorark, who should not have really any coverage against a Polyrath. But this thing is at full health, and it's a pretty speedy attacker. Uh, so I'm just going to go for that close combat, as it's going to go for the Dark Pulse, hoping for the flinch. Doesn't do much to Phelps because of that nice little fighting typing, and I do break through the para and finish it off with a close combat. So, Polyrath able to finish off the last half of the team for me like the goat that he is, and that is going to be the end of the match. So, that was a pretty solid game. Honestly, just a fun time kind of working around with this team, but... Uh, if you guys enjoyed, make sure to leave a like on the video. I'm really having a fun time making these, and I will continue to do so as long as you guys enjoy. But you got to hit that like button first. Peace out.